Pukeology podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. Hi, all my pregnant ladies. Welcome to Pukeology Pregnancy Podcast, Episode 6, Severe Morning Sickness. So what is hyperemesis gravidarum? Do I have it during my pregnancy? This podcast, Episode 6, will let you know really soon. Want no more morning sickness or pregnancy nausea? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your pregnancy nausea and vomiting now. Or just place no more nausea ban on your baby registry for a delivery bag at Bye Bye Baby or your nearest Bed Bath & Beyond stores. Have a baby that pukes in your car? No more nausea Kids is now found at 6,000 CVS's all across the U.S., so mamas, don't just think of yourself, but think of your little ones too. Today, that pregnancy humor, that may just make you want to pee your pants, like you don't have to pee all the time anyway, with crazy pukeology stories like pasta outpour, morning sickness outfit, and puppy puke hat. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, Humor and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months, and just know we're in this together. You'll learn today, what is hyperemesis gravidarum? Am I even saying that right? Signs that you have severe pregnancy, nausea, and vomiting, or the treatments for extreme pregnancy sickness, both in and out of the hospital. Growing up on a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Baby number one was really dying to have Olive Garden for lunch. I had been looking forward to it all week. I knew whatever I ate would not stay down, but I didn't want to disappoint my hubby. Sure enough, two bites of salad and two bites of breadsticks into our lunch, I was running for the bathroom. Thank goodness I made it in time. The most embarrassing part was that the waitress came in and heard me ralphing. I didn't just barf once. It took me eight times to empty me out, also known as fill up that bowl. When I came out, some of the wait staff were trying not to stare. Because I was only a few weeks pregnant, I'm pretty sure they thought I was bulimic. Thanks, Hessa312. Thanks again for sharing your hilarious puke story with us. I had a relatively good day at work, but usually around four, I get sick if I don't eat anything. So I had a couple pieces of taffy. As I was walking to my car, I got a whiff of the parking garage, which smelled like moldy grass or mulch. I ran into my car, got in, unplugged my nose, and after one breath, threw up all over myself. And the smell of my own throw up kept me throwing up and heaving the entire ride home. Thanks again for the up chuckle, Asia's. I'm living right now with my brother and he has a puppy that's almost a year old. Well, a few weeks ago, I woke up and knew as soon as I moved, I better get to the bathroom. So I get up and run full speed to the bathroom, and Thor, the little puppy's name, thought I was playing with him. So he was all excited, and as I ran into the bathroom, he was right beside me. So I threw up on the toilet seat, and little Thor sticks his head over the toilet, trying to see what exciting game that we were playing. I couldn't help it. I threw up all over the top of his head, and he didn't even move until I was done. He was so happy to be included in this fun barf game that he was delighted he got to take a shower with me uh, because I had to give him a bath after that. 
My brother comes home and asks me, why is Thor in such a good mood, wagging his little tail? LOL. I just laugh my face off. <laughs> Thanks again, mommy to be 84 for your hilarious puke stories. And if you ladies have them out there, please email me at pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y at nomonausea.com, N-O-M-O-N-A-U-S-E-A.com. <laughs> the science of puke pukeology Hyperemesis gravidarum, by definition, is a severe type of nausea during pregnancy that requires medical diagnosis by your OBGYN. Hyperemesis gravidarum is a really big, fancy way of saying, holy crap, you're going to be puking a lot. Good news is that it's very rare, with fewer than 200,000 U.S. cases per year, which equates to about 2% of those 70 to 80% of pregnant women who have morning sickness, but it is treatable by medical professionals. Some, unfortunately, with severe nausea and vomiting, also called hyperemesis, which is termed, if you were to break it down, hyper means high or a lot, emesis means to puke in medical terms, so lots of puke. Um, and gravidarum it means just, again, what it says when you are pregnant. Um, so that's how we actually classify it in medical terminology. But um, it is treatable. Some women, unfortunately, spend months in the hospital on bed rest. Um, others are actually able to go home with IVs and things of that nature. Severe nausea and vomiting during pregnancy is characterized by weight loss and electrolyte disturbances that hospitalization is usually required. This is the actual official term, hyperemesis gravidarum. The severe form of vomiting during pregnancy usually starts between like four to six weeks, but it can peak around nine to 13 weeks. So ladies in your first trimester, if you haven't got reprieve, um, Unfortunately, it could get worse. 80% of those diagnosed with hyperemesis gravidarum, and remember, like I said before, that's really only 2% of the morning sickness um, population of women, they usually get relief between 14 and 20 weeks. Yay, go second trimester. Uh, but 20% still have severe nausea and vomiting during the remainder of their pregnancy. That totally sucks. I always wonder if morning sickness was actually termed by a man because did anybody else have all day sickness kind of like me, uh, which I did. Hence, inventing different products to help with nausea and vomiting and helping all of you guys survive all nine months together. Knowledge is power. So you should be concerned if you have severe and constant morning sickness and again, I believe should be called all day sickness. Am I right, ladies, or am I right? Weight loss of 5% or more of your pre-pregnancy weight, decreased urination, especially if you haven't urinated, which means you haven't peed, in over four to six hours. Um, without the proper nutrients, your body naturally starts breaking down muscle. This muscle is providing the nutrients needed that are missing. So muscle wasting occurs. This muscle wasting leads to what we call in medicine increasing ketones or ketonuria, which are ketones or proteins from the breakdown of muscle found inside of the urine. Dehydration can be linked to headaches, confusion, fainting, loss of skin elasticity, low blood pressure, rapid heart rate, and again, if you stand up really quick and you feel really woozy, that's another sign too. Extreme fatigue is also a sign that we get very concerned about. And no, I'm not talking about just the little tiredness that we all experience. I mean, not being able to get up to do daily tasks, like getting the mail or even going to sit on the toilet. You'd rather just see, sit there and pee yourself because you're so exhausted. If you can't keep anything down and you've tried all the home remedies, and please make sure that you listen to Pregnancy Pucology Podcast Episode 4, which talks about home remedies to help decrease nausea and vomiting. And I'm talking basically 10 really good stuff that actually does work. Um, if those don't work, then contact your OBGYN, which is your pregnancy doctor, because again, 
you might have to go into the hospital. Um, and if you have to do so, please make sure that you ladies pack a hospital bag. And I'm not talking about a hospital bag for when you have the baby. I'm talking about a hospital bag so that you can stay a few nights, which encompasses you know, your pajamas, something that you're much more comfortable with, uh, whether that's a blanket because it does get kind of cold, some really fluffy socks, but make sure that they have a really good traction or grip because you don't want to fall. Um, and then last but not least, something to kind of like put your hair up because unfortunately, when you have hyperemesis gravidarum, you're puking a lot. A toothbrush is also highly recommended. <laughs> Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. So one of the most questions, I guess I could say, that I get from all of my readers, all of my listeners, and people want to know that have hyperemesis gravidarum, what the heck can I do? Do I just sit here, take it, and suffer? Or are there a few things that help me get reprieve, even if it's to better my quality of life during pregnancy? So mild cases are actually treated with just dietary changes. See what little one, and I'm going to call him little peanut because you never know if it's a boy or a girl. Um, see what little peanut likes and dislikes. A lot of time it is e equated to having a lack in your, how would I put it, your diet. So a lot of times you're going to be craving things that you might not normally tend to eat. I myself was lacking a lot of folic acid and during my pregnancy I personally don't love green leafy vegetables and one example is asparagus. I can't stand the way that it smells but believe it or not I had eaten an entire two bushels before I got to the couch that I was giving my husband the actual, um, his plate of food. So again, dietary changes, mild cases are treated by giving your body the nutrients that it's craving for. Rest is another one and antacids. Antacids are like things like Tums that could help to neutralize the stomach acid. So what happens is when you have a lot of vomit, that's the reason why it burns the back of your throat. It's very acidic. So if you can do something to neutralize, at least you're not going to have that horrible sore throat. Um, and it decreases the risk of any type of um, pulmonary issues if you were to actually inhale any parts of that, that puke whenever you're throwing up. Severe cases, on the other hand, they do need hospitalization. With an IV, which is an intravenous um, where we are able to give fluids, um, different electrolytes. Think of it like, we, we call it normal saline or lactated ringers. Think of it like a bag of clear Gatorade, right? Giving your body all of these nutrients that it needs. And then potentially TPN, which TPN is total parental nutrition, which means that everything that you would normally get from food, you can actually be given via an IV, um, but also if you are there for prolonged periods of time, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, you may have to get a PEG tube, which is something that feeds directly into the actual stomach itself. Research studies have actually shown that acupressure bands, like nomonasia, actually help to reduce ketone and urea, meaning that it actually is significantly, st like the s significant statistically shown and proven that it's decreasing the amount of muscle breakdown which means that it really is working. So again, even if you don't feel 100%, go out there, buy a nomonasia band, throw it on, and you'll be surprised at how much less your body is actually working to get all of that vomit up. Secondarily, you also have to understand that Things such as essential oils, I talk about it all the time, but essential oils like peppermint actually help to increase your body's movement of food down so that you're not throwing it back up. And then tertiary, what's the fastest way into your brain? Through your nose. So again, this fast acting relief in nomonasia has been studied and found that 80% of people can stop vomiting in 30 seconds, run out, go to Bed Bath & Beyond, Bye bye baby, run over to CVS and go grab yourself a nomonasia band or just go to nomonasia.com and you can get more information about your morning sickness relief bracelet and hyperemesis gravidarum right now. 
You have to understand that long-term care with IV nutrients and fluids is not the ultimate solution and requires the additional placement of other invasive feeding tubes like nasogastric feeding tubes through the nose or through the stomach or peg tubes like we talked about, percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy tube. Whoa, I need to take a break just after saying all those things. So what this peg tube actually does is it restores the nutrients through a tube passing directly through the abdomen. And this is a procedure that's performed by a gastroenterologist. Interestingly enough, gastroenterologists actually prescribe and or recommend Nomonaja Med Plus prior to the actual procedure itself. Uh, good news is there are two other types of non-harmful ways of having anesthesia for this type of procedure, which is that peg tube that we were talking about that is very safe for you in the baby. Um, number one, a small amount of propofol, a, it's like a sedation, um, again, that which is done by an anesthesia care provider, as well as local anesthetic on the skin prior to incision. So if you've ever heard of your dentist talk about lidocaine, you're actually numbing the area. Well, you can do the exact same thing through the stomach so that it won't hurt. And then again, your anesthesia care provider, like myself, um, can actually put you to sleep with very small amounts of propofol, making sure to secure that your airway is good and that you and baby are breathing normally and appropriately. Another option is what we call a spinal. A spinal block is actually what mothers that get C-sections uh, end up having. It's where we place a very small needle, even smaller than an epidural, um, inside the lumbar region of your back and will give you that same numbing medication or local anesthetic directly into your cerebral spinal fluid, which is that fluid that circulates your brain and your spinal cord. So what it does is it numbs everything, blocks everything from a little bit above your belly button down. And again, according to the amount or concentration of the local anesthetic that we give, we can block it higher or block it lower depending upon where that gastroenterologist needs to go. But again, remember, we're only looking at the upper stomach and that's so that you don't feel anything and so that you and the baby are completely safe during anesthesia um, during this quick peg tube placement. Medications are also available. I always utilize this as like my last resort, but again, medications are amazing, right? To be utilized in adjunct with natural therapies, we are able to help combat and give people a better life. So these medications, um, they should be used as rescue drugs because that's what they were intended on because of the documented harmful side effects um, to the unborn babies. Again, I always talk about how I prefer nomonausea because it helps to block four of the five nausea receptors in the brain and the belly. But if you're one of those 20% of people that doesn't work, um, again, you can get the following drugs prescribed. So metocyclopramide, which is also known as Reglan, it increases gastromotility, similar to what we talked about as peppermint oil, and usually we'll give about 10 milligrams to a patient, um, or the movement of food down is what that gastromotility is actually doing. Antihistamines, believe it or not, Benadryl. Benadryl has also been linked to helping decrease um, morning sickness or, or upset stomach, I guess you could say, but by ways of entering what we call the blood-brain barrier. It's not targeting nausea, it's instead making your brain forget by making you sleepy. If you're sleeping, you're not puking. Boom, mission accomplished. Pepsid. Uh, Pepsid decreases the formation of additional stomach acids, whereas antacids or those Toms actually work at the, the current stomach acids. What, a, what Pepsid will do is your receptors that blow acid into the stomach, it makes them stop blowing acid so that naturally as the time passes, one hour, two hours, three hours go by, your stomach acids are not going to be filling your stomach tank. Compazine and Zofran are two others. Um, Compazine, again, same thing kind of as Benadryl, crosses the blood-brain barrier. A lot of people utilize that as well as scopolamine um, for when they go on seasickness trips, for example. The only problem is, again, it doesn't target nausea and vomiting. Instead, it just makes you sleepy, sedated, drowsy, and the unborn child does have a very immature liver, so everything that you're cycling through you is also going through them too in a much smaller amount, but now 
Zofran, for example, in four milligram doses uh, was usually given to pregnant women for morning sickness. Well, they found, unfortunately, that Zofran has been linked to other type of cardiac problems in the baby and other type of teratogenic effects um, when the baby is being formed itself. So birth defects are real. My son had a hole in his heart um, and he had a severe murmur and it's because I used to pop Zofran like candy when I was pregnant. So again, um, luckily everything is good and he's wonderfully healthy and he's a strong boy, but if I could have gone back, I would have definitely looked into natural options. Again, sometimes it's hard to change someone who is used to or very comfortable with drugs to change their mind. Um, And I don't call it tree hugging. Instead, I call it, it is something that all women, especially pregnant women, need to be more aware. Make your family wellness a priority, not just treating the symptom as, as it comes. Please don't take Reglan if you have a family history of Parkinson's. Um, Compazine, uh, because of the fact that it decreases your dopamine. Compazine, if you have any type of crazy leg or neck movements that came along with Reglan, um, because of the fact that they are very closely related. And in high uh, dosage, Zofran, like we talked about before, has been linked to birth defects and cardiac abnormalities in both mom and baby. I want to thank you guys again so much for listening to Pugology Podcast, Episode 6. What is hyperemesis gravidarum? That's severe morning sickness, ladies. Again, I can't help thank you guys enough for listening. If you ever have questions, please shoot me a comment. Give me those five stars. Ask a question. I'd be happy to create a podcast around it. Again, I'm Dr. Pukenomo signing out for all of you pregnant ladies. Hear from me in the next two weeks. Pukeology Podcast, edutainment at its finest.